All right, this video is going to show how to use geometry to get the formula for the equation of this parabola, uh, for any parabola. And in this one, we're just going to use this geometry to get it. So first off, we're going to do is we're going to get this uh, x dimension and y dimension. And then from that point, we're going to take that line that starts in the center and goes over here. That's half of, that's going to be x. That's the x dimension. That's the x coordinate from this zero, which is the origin. That's x. So this line is going to cut that at the middle. So each one of these is going to be one half of x and one half of x. So we're going to run that through that midpoint of that line there and we're going to trim it to this center line, to the y-axis. And then we're just going to connect that. And then from here, we're going to take that intersection point, the bisector of both of these lines, that, in, that set that midpoint of both of those lines, and draw a perpendicular bisector from there up till it intersects this line. And that is, show R, that where those intersect is the focus. So control Y and then the focus and the directrix are the same distance apart so I started this circle here at the origin and control Y and I'm making that that's the focus distance from the origin to the focus from the origin to the directrix so I'm using that information there and just got rid of the circle so this is our directrix and Z so what uh, I did is I just trimmed I need to know where that directrix is actually I could draw a plumb line down here and I could trim this to that plumb line there and it would also be on the directrix so I could use the focus or the directrix I just chose the focus first but anyways the perpendicular the midpoint the perpendicular bisector of that line will intersect the X location the 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 vertical line of that x point will trim down to that point there too at the end i'll do it because i'm working on the memory of the computer right now and then then i didn't do say it before but that's the point of vertical intersection from this line that went down and intersected the uh, midpoint of this x axis on this side here that intersects the vert the center at the pvi and we already went through that this is the directrix it's the same distance from the focus and then there i labeled the directrix in the origin there's the x-axis y and then i'm starting to get the uh so this is x right x dimension there and then that's going to be half x x divided by two right and then the same thing the other side, x divided by 2. And then uh, I'm going to start showing what we're looking for is this triangle here. And this is y. Let's, I think I do that next. All right, so this is y over x is the angle here, right? So I do that next. And I show that these two angles are the same, just darkening them up. So this angle and this angle are the same, just using geometry, that X, that, that cross, this cross just starts at the beginning as it goes up, this angle and this angle are the same. And then this is uh, P, which I didn't label before. All right, so there's P, and this is 2P. So what we've been looking for is, uh, we can disregard this line for now. We're looking at this angle, and Y over X squared, and the same angle, and X over 2P. Those will equal each other. The tangent to this angle is gonna equal the tangent to that angle, opposite over adjacent. So opposite over adjacent, and then we end up with, uh, I'm not sure if I did any more here. So let's, that was the end of it. So we can lighten this one up. All right. So 
So we're looking for this triangle and this triangle. So y over x2, uh, y over x divided by 2, t, y divided by x divided by 2 is equal to x divided by 2p. Let's pick that. So let me break this up. I did this before, but I didn't label it in the actual description of what I was doing in the parabola. So we get y. We'll make it size 2 t x t p t 2 uh, v h x 2 equal and then uh, x divided by 2p uh, y over x2 is equal to x over 2p. So we got a fraction on the bottom. To get rid of that, we're going to multiply both, you know, 2 by 2, and you end up with like that. Anytime you get a fraction on the bottom, you just move the divisor to the top. <clears throat> That's what you end up with. Then we just cross multiply t. squared is equal to 4PY. That is the equation for the parabola. So to check that, we can go like this to just to show you in case you're not familiar. 2, 2, let me just copy that. <coughs> So formula, let's go to the calculator for PY, and we don't, I don't know what X is yet. Or, uh, let's do this, control V. That's the, uh, what the hell happened there? That's this one, so, <clears throat> and then X, X, right? So we're looking at x squared. So let's just do the math, and then this should make all these should numbers should add up to be the right thing, right? We already got that one. <coughs> so x squared is this here. Control C. So let's just go right in here. Calculator x squared, control V. That's 48 this squared uh, divided by, open parenthesis. Uh, if we do 4P, we're looking for Y. We have Y. Let's make sure that P closes out. So uh, x squared, so control C divided by 4 times control V. That should equal Y, uh, I mean a P, right? Close parenthesis. Control C. Hit there. Uh, I did something wrong. Control V. Squared. Divided by, that should be right. Control C. Compute. So let's do this, control V equals control 
control C, let me get rid of that. We just want to make sure that that's the P, right? We just took the 4y divided, x squared divided by 4y should equal p, and then let's just go over here and take a look at p and see what we got. 25.6669666, yeah, there you go. So if we did a little bit more, control C in Excel, we would get a more accurate 6669, right? Equals control V, enter. 66698. <clears throat> 6, 6, 6, Seems like that would round up, right? So there's a little error in there. I'm not sure where that came from, but that's going to give you. Oh, yeah, because this was uh, rounded off here. So if that was more accurate, that would be more accurate. But, anyways, that's how you find the. Uh, that's how you derive the formula. And that's. In case you had something that was, uh, so you didn't know what the focal length was and you had just the Y and the X and you needed to find the focal point, you could do that. And if you didn't know what X and Y was and you had a limit on the width, you could use the P to derive the Y at that width of the parabola. So it's very useful. You don't have to memorize the formula. You can see where it comes from. Uh, and it's much easier to recognize and remember a formula if you know where it comes from. That's why I did this. Uh, unfortunately, I've never seen a video or an illustration that shows this concept of uh, the line here on the X, right? If you start on the directrix at this X line and you do a diagonal to the focus using the perpendicular bisector, it will intersect the point the that will intersect this X line, this line of distance from the origin, this y component of the x, it'll intersect right there at the point. That is the point, you know. Right, if you had, if this was running uh, past, it trims out right there. Trim it. Uh, uh, that was the first one. Anyways, you trim it. E it trims out right there at that point. And you can do that anywhere along there. So let's say V, H, K, enter. I don't like that the way it is. So we have an X component here. We want to know what the, uh, let's say we didn't have the parabola there. We have the focus and the directrix, and we have this line here. So from here, V to there, enter, and then right at this location, V, F4, for the JAA, 90 degrees from there, all right, and then trim it at that, that vertical line that we're using as the component. And then we draw a point mark. there and you'll see that lands right on that line All right that's where that comes from and then the, the reason why that works is because the distance between here and here needs to be the same on a parabola and if you got a perpendicular bisector that extends out to this line your fixed point is 30.6684, 30.6684. It's going to anywhere, so anywhere along that perpendicular bisector, those will be the same. You're just worried about the one that's right perpendicular above there, the vertical line. And that's why it works, and that's what I know about parabolas. So there's more on compound parabolas and unsymmetrical parabolas, but a lot of that stuff is really you know, uh, hard to do without information. Just geometrically, um, it would be better to use the algebra because algebra, you can do things with quadratics and stuff that you can't really, uh, that I don't know how to do uh, geometrically. <clears throat> but there's plenty of videos on that, uh, on using three points of a parabola to derive the formula. And then you have the, the, the standard form too, which is even more useful, but Geometri geometrically, this is what I know. Hope you enjoy the video, and thanks for watching. Share and, and uh, 
what you know about it. Some people have a difficulty getting into the functions. I was one of them. I almost had to discover all of this myself so that it became useful to me. And thanks for watching.